All right. Welcome to Thursday Night Thoughts, everybody. This is your host, Adam Magistri, and we are live on Google Meet. If you want to join, the link is on our Facebook page. And if you can tell by the picture here, we've got a special guest tonight who is here with us, part of Utah flag football for probably two years. And his name is Gage Estes. I probably mispronounced that. Close enough. <laughs> but um, our group is called Utah Pickup Flag Football. We've been around for almost 10 years. I would say eight solid years. Um, and we've got about 600 members, and we play flag football all throughout Salt Lake City and uh, Utah, wherever we can, find some open fields. Or if we have to, we shovel it out. So we've got some highlights on YouTube if you want to check those out. And we are also part of a great league that's been around for about 30 years, um, run by some great people, Dustin and John. Um, we're about to start up this Saturday, fingers crossed, because we have been canceled the last two weeks just because of the snow and mud here. We've actually had a record snowfall here in Utah. Um, I think it's well over 800 inches of total snow. Um, and we're kind of worried about flooding the valley. Um, but here is a great little slideshow of all the recent champions. Um, my team was a recent champion last spring right here. Um, and I'm retooling the team this year. Bentley is coming back this year as a QB. Uh, Joel is coming back as our safety. Um, and then I think that's about it. Yeah, everybody else is new. Durian here, he uh, has blown out his knee almost every year. So he's probably done for good. And then um, we've got a bunch of other great teams here. So uh, we've got two guests today. Both of them have not been on the show before. Um, we'll do a quick intro of both of them and then dig into our uh, focus topic of the day. Um, Caden Bradbury's on the line here. Um, Caden, let's start off with your name. Um, how old you are? Yeah, Caden Bradbury. I am originally from up north in Brigham City and now living in Eagle Mountain, and I forgot the third one. What is that? Uh, how old you are? Oh, 25. 25. We got a young one. Oh, we got a couple young ones. So I'm I'm the old guy on the podcast. We had we had a couple 40 year olds last couple weeks here with AC and um, Kevin, but uh, we've got a great group of people playing this uh, this great game from well into their teens all the way up into their late 40s and even a couple 50-year-olds. So um, our QB for our travel team, his name's Armando, and he is actually 50 on the dot, and he can sling the rock. And then our, our guest of honor today, who we're going to focus on this uh, participant intro, his name's Gage, and same questions to you, your age, where you're from, um, and then also your favorite sports teams. Heck yeah, man. Hey, I'm from a little small town in Alabama. I'm 22 years old, 2000s baby. I like to make Adam feel old any chance I can. <laughs> I am um, from Alabama, so roll tide, roll tide till I die. And a fun story, I'm also a Seattle Seahawks fan. But how that happens, being opposite sides of the country, is I uh, didn't watch much football growing up. Um, started probably when I was like 10 or 11 years old and... We don't have an NFL team in Alabama, so I just said, huh, which one's colors do I like the most? And is that neon green, baby? So that's what we picked. <laughs> Yikes. So, yeah, heck yeah, that's I've been playing. I uh, enjoy playing with Adam's team. I'm in active duty Air Force, so I got stationed at uh, Nellis Air Force Base. So that's why I had to leave Utah. I'd probably still be there today. I was stationed there before this. So thank you for your service, first off. And then... How many um, different bases have you been stationed at? Um, as far as permanently stationed at, only two at uh, Hill Air Force Base, base, which is northern Utah, and then now Nellis. But um, as far as training goes, I guess I've been uh, – has to be seven now, seven different bases. So it's been, okay. been all around the country so far, going to Alaska at the end of this month. Oh, fun. Permanently or just for – No, training? just for about, about a month, just training. Okay. Cool. Awesome. And then Thank next you. question on the list here, uh, who's a dream athlete that you'd like to have dinner with and spend four or five hours with to just shoot the shit with and, and get to know better? Hmm. That's a great question, man. I don't know. I, um, 
you know, you'd want it to be a Seattle Seahawk just because you claim the you claim the fanship so hard, but I don't know if it would be. For the longest time, it was Russell Wilson was always my idol man. But <laughs> he still is. I still think he's a great player, but I, uh, you know, he seems a little one dimensional. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but so as far as his thing, I don't know. Big Travis Kelsey fans in this household, so I mean, you know, that'd be really cool to pick his brain. Awesome. Yeah, Travis Kelsey. I I think he uh, has got to be on Mount Rushmore of tight ends, probably number one by the end of his career here. Exactly. Probably the George Washington of the Rushmore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't think of anybody except for uh, maybe, maybe Gonzalez. G, yeah. yeah, Gonzalez. And then who is the other chief that was a tight end who was just lights out? Or was that Gonzalez? Gonzalez was the chief's guy. Yeah, yeah Tony Gonzalez. And then um, you go Rob Gronkowski. The Chargers. Uh, you can go Antonio Gates. Yeah, I like Gates. I, I like Gates better than Gronkowski because I think Gronkowski was just a glorified receiver. He didn't really block. <laughs> yeah, that's but, fair. That's fair. Um, he also a product of Tom Brady, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, <laughs> awesome. And then next couple places here uh, or questions here. What's your favorite place to eat and what's your favorite color? Favorite color is red. Give me that crimson red. <laughs> but um, favorite place to eat? I don't really. I mean, I just had Chick Fil A today, and Chick Fil A doesn't get much better than that. You know, I know <laughs> it's simple, but hey, it's cheaper and oh, it's some good chicken. The Lord's chicken. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's always a good choice at Chick Fil A, especially since they're so fast and efficient, and uh, it's, true. it's always their pleasure to serve you. So it's that it's peanut definitely. oil. <laughs> Yeah, it's always a good experience. It's there. different. To, uh, <laughs> they just opened up a Raising Cane's here, right near us in Sandy. And I went there yesterday and I was like, it's okay. But I'm like, it's not worth the price of, of what it is and um, where it's at. So I, I definitely still would take Chick-fil-A over Raising Cane's. Um, and then the next one's kind of a, a three-part question. What do All you right. like better here, movies or music? When you say here, do you mean in Utah or do you mean like just no? What do so, I like? yeah, okay. so you're going to pick um, your three favorite movies or your three favorite artists? So All right, I'll go, can... I'll go movies just because I feel like I got a better selection. Uh, top three number one is Shawshank Redemption. I love that movie. Uh, number two is probably Interstellar. I love that movie as well. And number three, it's a little closer, but probably Inception. Man, Inception. I had to watch that four or five times before <laughs> I understood it. It was that was rough. That was a rough movie for me. But, I understand. Yeah, it, it it takes a lot of watches, but it just seems like it gets better every time I do. Yeah, and it's been at least ten years since I've seen Shawshank and Interstellar. I saw that like a month ago, and yeah, I, I love that movie. That's the one where uh, uh, Matthew yeah, McConaughey yeah. gets stuck in the bookshelf, right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw that one about a month ago, and I love that movie too. So, a um, couple other questions, diving a little bit deeper into your character and your background here. All right. um, what's something that people misunderstand about you uh, after meeting you and hanging out with you for a couple of days? Um, I think the biggest thing is probably they hear this accent and they think, you know, I'm real hillbilly redneck kind of guy. And I mean, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with people who are, but that's not really my my thing i just got stuck with accent <laughs> i love the big cities uh <laughs> las vegas is probably the best place i've ever lived at i love it so much here so but if you growing up you would have told me i would have been on the west coast i would have called you crazy <laughs> but awesome. no, i do I think that is the biggest misconception <laughs> okay and then um this is one that i think doesn't get touched on enough for guys um a lot of girls get compliments all the time and it's kind of something that they just disregard. But whenever I get a compliment to myself or what I do as like an athlete or as a dad or a worker or whatever, it sticks with me for a long time. What's a compliment that stuck with you uh, that you've gotten? Um, well, we can keep it in house here and probably the best thing, it wasn't even one compliment, but probably the best thing that I think has ever been done and complimented for me is you made me a highlight reel for my going away party <laughs> of Utah. And that was one of the best things I'd say it's probably ever happened. That was awesome. Just the fact oh. that you could take that much time and do that for me. It was cool. Yeah. It, that's, that's one of my goals in life is to surround myself with people that are good people. And both of you on here tonight, you guys are, are a couple of the best people I know. 
and I would definitely be uh, not as happy in life if it wasn't for you two, uh, my friend Kenny, Ronnie, uh, a lot of the guys here in this group. Uh, they're really great people, and we've all got our issues, and we've all got our, our mental quirks and, and things like that, but it's all love. We all love this game, and, and really my goal in life is to just – bring people up around me and uh, help myself to, to learn something from you and to learn something uh, or to teach other people something about uh, how they can better themselves. So I, I appreciate that. Um, no, for sure. I would, uh, I'd say the same for you, man. I mean, I don't know if there's ever been a group, whether it was football or anything, like the first day I ever came out and played football with y'all guys was uh just through some random guy that I'd met on the Air Force Base, he said, yeah, I played with y'all. And funny enough, I don't think I'd ever saw him play again after I showed him. <laughs> so I don't even know who it was. But um, I never felt more welcomed into a group than the first time I played with y'all. And, I mean, it was – we were cleating ice off the field. It was – you know, there was – it was wild. But, you know, I yep, definitely – we're still doing that. We, we did that two weeks ago. We had to shovel off a whole field and – uh, coaches were getting mad at us. And then the next day I saw those same coaches go on with their football players and say, yep, we got to shovel the field now. And I'm like, <laughs> we're, we're just ahead of the curve, man. It's, it's definitely something if I understand that like a plow is going to tear up a turf field, but if just people with a shovel can gently, uh, scrape off the ice, it, it should be fine. But yeah, it's a, a great group we got here. Um, hopefully we can build this team into something successful, do a little bit better than we did in Tampa. Um, that's also why I brought Caden on. Caden is our our new rusher. Um, awesome. We're going to get him some offensive reps too, but his main uh, role for Vegas, we've got two teams going down to Vegas next Friday. Um, we're playing all day Sunday for the USA flag uh, invitational for uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. We've got at least four games guaranteed. And then – um, if we make the playoffs, another two or three games there all day Sunday. So please sure, be sure to check that out at USA Flag. Um, and then next question here, Gage. Um, what's the most surprising thing you've seen or done recently in the last year or so? Hmm, most surprising. I don't know, man. That's that's a good question. I don't know. I'd say surprising. What what's that about? Uh, it's just a TDY thing that we get to do every now and then. So it's kind of like I would went to – had to be – probably six months ago, we went to Southern California for the same kind of thing. It just so happens it's Alaska this time. But I'd say the most surprising thing that, like, I wouldn't have saw coming is I've really uh, devoted a lot of time to golf. I have fell in love with the, that sport. And so, I mean, for instance, today, this morning, I've golfed 36 holes today. I mean, I, mean, I, yes. I really – I love Jeez. it, man. It's Masters weekend. Turn me up. <laughs> Dang. So, I don't know. I, just, I think that's the most surprising thing is just how much I fell in love with that sport. You a big golfer, Caden? Yeah, I just started up like a year, year and a half ago too, but it's it's nice to just get out there. You don't have to have a ton of energy going into it or be amped up. Just relax with the boys. Have a good time. I love it. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan. I, I'll try and play at least once or twice a summer, but – <laughs> I like top golf because you're very social about it, but walking around a golf course, driving a cart, it's, it's, it's probably just cause I suck. <laughs> I think the two times I played last summer, um, I think I hit like a 95 on nine. And then I think I hit like an 80 on one. And I was super psyched about that. I, like, <laughs> I thought I you were about to say 95 on 18. I, I thought like, you yeah, was too. Like, that's not like, bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. I did not, yeah. No, I can't do 18. I've done 18 once in my life, and I think it took four or five hours, and I was just like, yeah, I'm never doing that again. Yeah, I don't know. I think the thing I love the most about it, like, more than anything else, is you don't have to have, like, if it's just you, just go out and have a round. You know, you don't, like, flag football, I can't do that every day. You know, there's, I don't have 10 to 15 people coming out every day that want to play football, but I can go out there and play around the golf by myself if I have to. <laughs> so that's really the best part about it, I think. Definitely. Have you done any golf up here in Utah? I did not. I actually started one side and moved to Vegas. So there's a lot of good golf courses down here. Yeah, I'm sure you can play year round too. Yes, you can. I think the coldest they get, I mean, obviously the coldest it gets in Vegas is like 30 degrees. What's going on, Nick? What's up, Gage? How are you doing, brother? Pretty good. How are you? 
Heck yeah, man. Doing good. Just thankful to be part of this Thursday night talks right here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And then next couple questions. This is a great transition to what you were talking about already. Um, any um, fun travel upcoming this year, like cruises or trips or anything like that for you? Um, like I said, I... Uh... Like I said, plan on going to Alaska at the end of this month, so I'm excited to see that. I think it was a goal I'd made before I even knew about the Air Force or anything. And I wanted to go to all 50 states. That's kind of a bucket list thing. So getting a chance to go to Alaska and getting paid for it as well is a big, uh, big opportunity. But um, then I'm going back home to Alabama in July. I uh, just one of my college friends is having a wedding, so go out there and retouch with everybody. But that's about the most of my travel. All right, so is this your first time going to Alaska? It is. It is. You got to talk to Wolf, ask him some uh, stuff to do up there. That is true. Yeah, I forgot. He, I even forgot. Yeah, he went up there. He lived there for a while. Yeah, he lived there for a while. He he definitely, I think he still goes back and forth there every couple months. But um, yeah, his his uh, glasses business and his uh, goggles business is blowing up. And he's always um, talking about Alaska and, and his entrepreneurship and, and stuff like that. But uh um, in regards to um, next on the list here, we've got um, what's a, a book or a movie that you've seen recently that you're like, man, if I if I gave somebody uh, a gift card to Barnes and Noble or a movie theater, I, I'd tell them to go see this. Mm, unfortunately, the last movie I saw was the new Ant Man movie, and that was not it. Not even like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know, not dodging your question, but one movie I'm very excited for is Oppenheimer coming out in July. It is uh, another Christopher Nolan film, and obviously two of my top three movies are from Christopher Nolan directing, which is Interstellar and uh, Inception, so it should be very good. But I, I think that's what I'm most excited for. <laughs> I've heard the name, but I have no idea what, what's Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was one of the main uh, scientists behind the Manhattan Project. So like the nuclear bombs in World War II, mm. it was like uh, Albert Einstein and uh, Oppenheimer. So huh. he was one of the big two, and Christopher Nolan's making a whole movie about his lifetime. So very cool. I'm really excited. Okay. About it. Robert Downey Jr. is in it. A couple other big, huge names are in it. So very cool. That, you know, I'd buy everybody a gift card to the the movie theater for that one to come see it with me. <laughs> Definitely. So. Um, when does that come out? Does that come out this month or? Uh, no, it's in July. I think it's like early July. I think so. I don't okay. know the exact date, but the trailers right. look really good for it and everything too. Cool. So bringing it back to what this group is about with sports and football, um, what is something that you enjoy the most about football? And then on the other hand of that, what is something you wish would go away from football? Enjoy the most. I mean, I love football. I love watching it. I love everything about it. But, I mean, it's just something about the camaraderie you get when playing as a team. It's not like golf. It's not like, you know, tennis or pickleball or any of this other stuff where it's a solo sport kind of thing. I mean, you really, if you don't have the best team out there, you know, one guy's not going to do it all. So I really enjoy that when it all comes together, when there's a game plan and it works. Um, as far as worst thing... I don't know. You could probably say it about all the sports, but it seems like, you know, the refs, man, something's got to change about these refs. <laughs> and even as far as professional level, you know, I, I do think there's a technology where we can kind of automate some of this stuff as far as, you know, like, you know, trackers and footballs or, or you know, lasers like they do in tennis and the lines um, as far as like first down markers could go. Um, I understand that's not, you know, practical at all levels, such as our flag football league, but I don't know. They're, that's that's probably my least favorite part. No, I, I feel that a lot. Yeah, it's definitely something where uh, a, a coin toss can uh, make or break your, uh, your season there. So, <laughs> shout out Bills. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta, gotta always have some some Bills Mafia going here. And, and I do want to um, say, if any refs hear this, it's not a jab at y'all. It's just that's a hard job. I don't think anybody can do it. You know, one hundred percent correct at any time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Bentley is uh, a big time ref with this league, and he's going to be training me this week. I'm going to try and do some refing as well, and I, I feel for them so much because they put up with so much mouth from 
everybody in the league and giving them a hard time, badgering them about calls. And there's some people there that are just crazy annoying to them. And I'm like, they're getting paid 20 bucks an hour to do this. It's definitely not worth their time. Um, but it's something where like, it's a rec league, but on the right. NFL level, I totally understand. There should be little RFID tags in the football that says, all right, this was a first down. This, we shouldn't have to put a damn, uh, <laughs> three by five card in between the chains to say if it's a first down or not. It should just be something that like, yep, the technology shows it and it's un, un, uh, unquestionable there. So I, exactly. I definitely get that, but, uh. What's something, the, the last question on the list here is what's something that you've always wanted to try, but just never had the time or the resources to do? Mm, I don't want it to sound <laughs> cocky or, you know, arrogant or anything, but I, I don't know. I feel like I live a pretty uh, adventurous lifestyle. I mean, uh, I don't know if there's anything I can really say that I haven't done that I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I don't have any kids or anything. It's just my wife and I, and most of the time we, if we want to do something, we just go do it. There's really no, you know, limitations, if you will, besides like money. And luckily I don't pick two expensive hobbies besides golf. Okay. So there's nothing on the bucket list. Like, Oh, I want to go to uh, Fiji or I want to go see the pyramids or something like that, that you haven't checked off yet. Mm, I mean, like I said, the, I guess the earlier conversation was I want to go to all 50 States, but that's, you know, it's not a big one, and um, that's a big I one. I don't think. Yeah, I, I think I've been <laughs> to twenty states, and I don't think I'm ever going to get to all fifty. But how that's close fair. are you? Um, I'd have to sit down and count them out. But I've been to most of them on the East Coast. I've got a lot of Midwestern states that I have to go through. I've never been to a lot of those. There's really never been a reason to. What's the What's the criteria for like the? Yes, I'm like, talking. If I step one toe across okay. the state line, <laughs> that counts. <laughs> You can but, totally do that then. That's a hundred percent doable. It's true. Flying it's true. over states count? No, yeah, no, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta Lay be on the ground. Town. On the ground. <laughs> Lay over um, counts if you don't leave the airport. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, yeah. I'd say, I mean, since I started golfing, there's like of course bucket list courses you'll hear people talk about, which is like, you know, some of the best courses in America or not even America, you know, there's some in like Scotland and you know, just awesome opportunities to play there. So that would be really cool, such as like, you know pebble beach or you know of course augusta they're playing at the masters right now um whether it's the scotland course the st andrews a oh, bunch of courses so i gotta say right now that's the only thing that i've been like oh, i wish i could do that hmm. yeah i uh i saw some uh videos of some utah courses and they're just gorgeous that are like up on cliffs down in moab and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Are, are there any courses that you've done, Caden, that are just like take your breath away here in Utah? You're on mute, bud. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, I just go to the same course every time. It's close by and I have a membership, so I don't see the point in paying anywhere else. <laughs> cool. Awesome. And then um, let's see. Now let's get into the fun stuff. I think Nathan... Kemp is trying to get on here too, but he their number for it. There ain't no number for it. It's Click the on, uh, the code if you'll the QTB code. Yeah, I, I put that on there. Um, let me see if I can send this to him. It's so annoying to put in though. Like I click the link and it just takes me to the download the app thing for the app store. I don't know why. Um, huh. Weird. But so let's get into the in. fun stuff here. Um, so first off, we're going to do a weird draft of the all time Seahawks and good thing. We've got four of us. So it <laughs> gives us a little bit more diversity of who's on that list. It's true, so, man. um, since Gage, you're easily the youngest, uh, yeah. how old are you? 22? 22. Okay. And then the next youngest is probably Caden, right? How old are you Caden? Mute again. He said 25 though. Caden? 20, yeah, 25. Okay. My bad. <laughs> Try to use the 27? 28. 28? All right. So we're going to do four picks each, and we're going to do a stink draft of your all-time Seahawks. Heck yeah. All right. You want me to start this show off? Yep, yep. Um, I don't know. It's debatable, man. I feel like, I mean, this is why 
teams don't like the uh, first pick in the draft. I feel like if I mess <laughs> it up, I'm going to get baked. Even though I do want to say on the shout out of uh, last week's Thursday Night Talks when y'all did the breakfast draft, I told Adam this. I don't know how coffee didn't get picked on breakfast foods. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I don't even. I don't care if y'all are Mormons or not. Coffee belongs on the list. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was the only Mormon on the group that week, and Where? yeah, nobody brought it up. But I think that's a Utah thing. I don't drink <laughs> coffee. I never have. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. All right, but anyway, to the list. You got to go running back first pick. It's just whether which running back, you know. Mm, there's obviously the two I'm best. There's obviously the two best. So, but I'm gonna go Marshawn Lynch. I mean, it's just more of my time, and it's awesome. Yeah, Skittles, man. It's the beast quake. You got all <laughs> kinds of memories. But number two, yeah, man, you, I, I'm surprised you took him so high. I was gonna take him because he started with the Bills and he <laughs> yeah. didn't do well until he left the Bills. Yeah, well, you'll get that. <laughs> Caden, what do you think? Uh, I got to take Bobby Wagner. And he just re-signed, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think he's still Seahawk. Hopefully he retires there, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he retires he's soon. Yeah, hopefully he retires soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's terrorizing these poor 49ers. It's literally, dude. I Yeah. The Seahawks have given me more nightmares than like any other team. I don't want to hear it, man. I don't want to hear it. I, mean, I got Nick Bosa breathing down my quarterback's neck at all times. <laughs> all right, you, Nick? I'll take Russell Wilson because yeah. that man is a nightmare for me. <laughs> oh, man. I got to go uh, the other running back, Sean Alexander, man. It's, it's yeah, just yeah. – the way it is, he he made a Madden cover, um, and yeah. I, I think he deserved it. Unlike a lot of those Madden cover guys, like uh, Peyton Hillis, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> he was a flat, exactly, flash in the pan, uh, that kind of thing. And then I get a second pick. Um, I gotta go um, with the mouth. I gotta go with Richard Sherman. That's a good pick. Uh, yeah. good pick. I don't like him, but he was a great player. And uh, I think he makes a lot of good points. He was, yeah, he's he was smart. very he was very good. As as far as somebody to base my defensive knowledge off of, and even in flag, he's one of them. I mean, he was never the most athletic. He was never, you know, a four four, four three speed guy. He was just very fundamental, very good. Yeah. So. And his mouth, dude. God <laughs> damn it. Yeah. You get in somebody's head like no other. <laughs> he was great. <laughs> yeah, that crab tree block. Yeah. I was like I, <laughs> Yeah, that uh, makes me so mad, dude. <laughs> his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, that was like the end of it, basically. All right, Nick, who you got? Oh man, um, I'll go Cam Chancellor. Whew, I was hoping he'd slide. I was hoping he'd slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good pick. What was he a safety? Yep, strong safety. Yep. Now, he was – that's my favorite Seahawks player of all time, personally. Really? Yeah, I love Cam. He's Jones. scary, dude. So fun to I like. think I think he's better. I think he's really the Legion of Boom, the main piece oh, yeah. in my – Yeah. All right. All right, Caden, you're up. All right, I'm going to go with Earl Thomas. Earl yeah. Thomas. Oh, hey. All the Legion of Boom off the board. Yeah. <laughs> These next few rounds right. are going to get interesting. I'm going to hey, let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Um, hey, shout out offensive line. I'm going to go Walter Jones. He was, I mean, probably arguably one of the best offensive tackles ever. I mean, he's very good. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's some other good ones. You got, you know, Trent Williams playing now. Shout out 49ers again. Oh, yeah. But pretty sure the Walter Jones thing is just because he's from Alabama, right? Well, I mean, it never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as second goes, I don't know. I mean, give me DK Metcalf. Just he's young. Oh, true. I want him on the team. Yeah. <laughs> Make a good bodyguard, too. It's true. I'm really, I really kind of picked that one just for the fun draft coming up. I know there's some coming that he could play in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true, true. <laughs> All right, Caden. Oh man, you guys go too fast, and I don't know Seahawks. <laughs> uh, 
I was about to say DK, but he took him <laughs> off the board. I don't know. I'm going to say the fans. 12th, 12th man. man. The 12th man. Oh, God. They're just as good of a factor as anything in a 12th man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of people claim that their stadium can do that, but I think I think Seattle's got one of the only stadiums that actually like makes a difference. Them and Arrowhead, yeah. man. I'd say those are the only two. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. My two most hated teams right now. Well, I guess <laughs> Cowboys and Patriots, but they kind of fell off. <laughs> That's true. All right, uh, Nick. My turn? Yeah. I'm gonna go Jerry Rice because Ooh. he needs to be on my list. That's true. <laughs> How, did he retire there? Uh, I think I so. He, he was very really upsetting. He yeah, he was like 42. But, huh. yeah. That is fair. I mean, it's a good pick. Adrian I, Peterson I, played for the Seahawks. Go ahead and pick him, Adam. Oh, <laughs> no. He, yeah, he's my favorite running back of all time. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go with the guy I think is better than DK. I'm going to take Tyler Lockett. All right. Um, I'm going to take Tyler Lockett, and then I'm going to finish it off with uh, um, a, a very mid-commentator, uh, uh, <laughs> Matt Hasselbeck. All right. Oh. I don't I'm even gonna know take... how to spell that. Back? Back? <laughs> Close enough. There Good you go. Yeah, Stop you know there. what I mean. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to take Doug Baldwin, partially for the, the, dra- the funny one coming up. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with Geno Smith. All Get right. I'm back. Player of the year. That's crazy. I know. Why was he, dude? <laughs> he was yeah. good. What I do think, you mean? Why was he? What are we? Talking? I mean, he so did crazy. good, but like, come back. Somebody was like, he, "What did he come back from? Just being a shitty quarterback?" <laughs> yeah, he went from being a third stringer to being a starting top ten guy. Yeah, I there does need to be a most improved player category, though. I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I think that was unanimous out of this season. Season, what we needed. Yeah. But, all, right, all right, to round out this draft, I'm going to go statistically the best receiver in the Seahawks all time of uh, Steve Largent. Sergeant Largent. Mm. Huh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> He's top of the the professional athletes list for the Seahawks, so he must be good. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. Five people my time. I think he's got a trophy named after him. After him, he's a oh, Hall of Famer. Oh. All right. So. so then, yeah, like you said, you've seen these before. So we're gonna take this Mount Rushmore from each of us, and then we're gonna each vote on yeah, who would you. do better in one of these crazy things. And I've got a bunch of them now. So <laughs> there's about a hundred oh, wow. different Ooh. here, and we're just gonna put a randomizer on it and see what we got. We'll click it three times. One, two. Three, 46. See what it was. 46 is who's more likely to be a superhero? So what we'll do is we'll turn that question into a more group type question. So which group as a superhero team would be the best and survive the most out of these four teams? Does that make sense? All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, DK Metcalf definitely hit <laughs> for this one. <laughs> <laughs> If I had known this was the question, I would have picked Michael <laughs> Bennett. Didn't Michael Bennett just like yep. murder somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. Would that go on your superhero list, Adam? <laughs> That's a villain list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which group wins as a superhero team in a fight? All right. Well, if man might be a little wild card on you, and you get all the fans as one, or what? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, man. It's a big ass group. What that is true? Did, why did that go over there? Okay. There we go. All right. I'm going to vote first since Gage got to go first for the draft. All right. Man, this is an interesting list here. I think Skittles would be passed out high. (laughs) I think DK is pretty tough. Walter Jones would be a good protector, but Steve Largent's too out of the blue. I don't know him very well. I think it's this one. I think Caden's got it. Um, Gino would be a good 
play caller to say how to defend everything. Twelfth man, you got the numbers for human shields. <laughs> Earl Thomas hit really hard. Bobby Wagner hit really hard. But then Cam Chancellor also did really well. I think this is probably the weakest group except for Cam. <laughs> Ouch. But then my group's pretty weak too because I'm Matt Hasselback and Tyler Lockett. Hmm. So I'm yeah, I'm gonna go with Caden here. All so. right, all right. Nick, I'll go you're... Gage. Shout out, shout out. Okay, yeah, Caden. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with myself, honestly. Just too <laughs> many too many people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a lot of people. I don't know. I, I... I mean, DK is a superhero. Is insane. <laughs> yeah, he's already got to be a superhero. <laughs> yeah. um, on the contrary, I do think Marshawn Lynch. Uh, you can control that guy. Hey, we're in a <laughs> we're in a winning team. Yeah. So, um, I think I got to go with me. If Kane's gonna go with Caden, I got Gage's got to go with Caden. <laughs> All right. We gotta yeah, Marshawn and DK on the same side normally <laughs> yeah, a would do a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah. But based on all the interviews, have you seen all the recent interviews of Marshawn Lynch? He just goes off the rails, like <laughs> so fast. And the interviewer is usually like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to rein it back in, keep him on topic, whatever it is. I'm like, this guy's just a wild card. And I love it, but it's also like, if you were to try to tell him, if he were to go to like the Patriots or something, he would not have done anything. It's true. Yeah. So we will put this up on the Facebook page later tonight and see who the uh, tie break goes to out of these two teams here. Um, but, yeah, I think that's pretty even. If, if DK can be his crazy uh, Jack self and, and Skittles can uh, be actually beast mode, I, I think they can uh, do some damage on, on this group here, especially with uh, 12th man being a bunch of uh, overweight people yelling in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> so, awesome. Thanks for doing that, guys, here. And then next, let's take a quick uh, sponsor break to shout out water. Um, I just got this new blender bottle water bottle. I drink about 200 ounces a day and pee every 45 minutes. So it keeps me active, keeps me not eating so much junk food, um, and it also keeps me hydrated. So make sure you're drinking your water. And uh, hopefully in a few more episodes, we can get a real sponsor that uh, <laughs> tells me how to do some podcasting shit right so <laughs> um all right next thing on the list here let's do some fun drafts um let's see do you guys have any ideas of what you'd want to do or would you like me to just pull from the big list here you can pull from the big list man i love doing these drafts so i'm all locked right. and loaded for any of them all right so let's click this three times 81, 8, 91. We're going to go deep on this. <laughs> 91. It's going to be fantasy sports and betting strategies and advice. Huh. Oh, Jesus. Yikes. All right. So that is an interesting one. So let's take that, put it in a draft here. Why is it doing that? There we go. Okay. So we will do. Old, it's the youngest now. <laughs> Nick, Aiden, Age. So, shall we do? You tell me how you want to turn this into a draft, and I'm the game. So, I think the best way to do this would be to take 2022 and do a draft of offensive players and anybody in 2022 and drafting your top five guys how's All that right. sound guys okay so you can just you can just delete the sports betting strategies part of it then yeah. <laughs> i don't know what sports betting strategies there would be Besides bet against your own team. Bet the money line on the Chiefs. That's always a pretty safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's>, uh, <laughs> wait, didn't somebody get um, suspended for a whole year because they bet on their own team? Yeah. Uh, Calvin Ridley. Yep. 
Oh yeah, I loved him. He was a great receiver. Yeah, and he, no, I don't even think he even bet that much. Yeah. And then yeah, and then Pete Rose for baseball. He he bet against himself, but he, I think he still got in the Hall of Fame for baseball. But yeah, I don't know so, why they would do that. Like I don't see a problem with betting on yourself. I mean, it's kind of like Floyd Mayweather always did in boxing. Yeah. So like betting Gage, on yourself. I'm gonna yeah. let you pick. Um, we're gonna do top five, but we're gonna pick a specific um position. So it's gonna right. be QBs, running backs, uh, or receivers. Uh, yeah, give me receivers. I feel like the receivers have the most depth. We will we'll have, you know, we're gonna make 20 picks right here. So I don't even what know. What an Alabama answer. What an Alabama <laughs> answer. Oh my goodness. Wide well, receiver you. Also known as running back you, also known as just the best. So sorry. <laughs> Went off on a tangent there. <laughs> That's all right. All right. Jeez. So we're only going to do current players. Sure. So running backs, I'm going to take my first overall guy. Oh, I wish I could take Josh Allen because he's basically a running back. <laughs> him, and, him and Lamar should just be running backs. Um, but I'm going to take Nick Chubb. I think he's the, the best guy out there right now. Really? Just because he's got a good blend of power and speed. Yeah. Nick, you couldn't have gifted you this pick any easier. He's uh, handing it to you on a platter. I know. <laughs> I'll take... Uh, Debo? <laughs> Austin? No, okay. Uh, I'll CMC, for sure. CMC, baby. Huh. That's an interesting one, yeah. I just don't like that he's so injury prone. Nick is too. Nick Chubb is too. But like, but like, I think that I really think that players are basically always injured. And when they're on a shitty team, I mean, you know, it's a lot harder to be like, I'm playing through this fucking knee injury. Regard, like, he didn't get hurt at all in the Niners. I don't think he sat out a single game. Yeah, he's like, if we're winning, I'm playing. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, literally. (laughs) Which that is a good like paradox, you know? I mean, what? At what point do you justify not playing through an injury just because you know your team's like not even eligible for a playoff chance? Exactly. Like, I mean, if you, if you're if you're like, dude, if someone hit me in the knee wrong right now, it'd really fucking fuck me up. And, and it costs you millions of dollars in in contract. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or but to me, just, that sounds more like Gage is making a shot at LeBron more than he's <laughs> taking a shot at the NFL <laughs> because the Lakers should not have made the playoffs, but I think they're like a six or seven seed right now yeah mm. no I don't, I don't know that always is an interesting interesting uh you know paradox like i said that how much you do because it definitely seemed like christian mccaffrey you know all of a sudden he doesn't get hurt anymore on the, on the uh-huh. <laughs> yeah what are they feeding him in san francisco there they're so. feeding him wins that's what they're feeding him <laughs> All right, Caden, who's your first overall running back? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go the opposite way and let's go with someone super consistent in Austin Eckler. Yep. Is he still in uh, the Chargers? He is, but he is looking yeah. for a trade. Hmm. He has requested a trade. Interesting. All right, Gage, you get two. All right, well, Derrick Henry for sure coming off. And yep. we'll just, I mean, might as well, since we're going fantasy, keep it uh, Alabama thing, go Josh Jacobs. So, yeah, I feel like that's two pretty strong picks. Both of them went to Alabama? Oh, real time. Dang. They were right behind each other, too, in classes. It was like, then it went Mark Ingram, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs. Damn. That's crazy. (laughs) All right, I'm going to go with Saquon. I feel like he's going to turn up. Yeah, he's definitely made a a comeback. I did not think his career was going to turn around. (laughs) Two people were mad at the Geno beat out for comeback player of the year. <laughs> I'll take Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I think he balled out on the Bengals. And more importantly, like, I mean, the Bengals just had so many things going on that, like, I think there are some players that will do better. That's why I shot that kid, right? Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> my fault. Did I miss something? You didn't see that? 
No, so Joe Mixon had some kids playing Nerf gun games on his property or something, and I think he actually shot one with a real gun. What the it fuck? Wasn't, the real story was it wasn't him. Like One of the other kids had a real gun and shot another kid. They were like 16-year-olds. Uh, oh, okay. So it, originally when the report came out, it was just like, kid has been shot at Joe Mixon's house. So. <laughs> oh, jeez. Huh. It was definitely wild. Still bad. It's still like, how did that exactly happen? But mm. either way, <laughs> good running back. Good young running back. <laughs> Jesus. Man. Um, I'm going to go with a homer here. Uh, Jamal Williams. He, like, surprised the hell out of me. Um, and he's here from here, BYU. I think he got, like, 20 touchdowns this year and is on the Lions and is apparently a good player. And I'm like... One, how are you coming from BYU when you're a good running back? Two, the Lions have a running back? <laughs> Didn't he get suspended yeah. for being a bad Mormon? I don't know, maybe. Wait, is <laughs> he the one that got traded? Yeah, he got traded to the Saints. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. I forgot someone. Damn. Yeah, I'm pretty fuck. sure Jamal Williams got suspended for like a year. I don't know if he was... <sighs> I want to say he was adultering in BYU <laughs> and got suspended. Huh. And then I think the next guy up is uh, – it's got to be um, – oh, man. My favorite purple guy, uh, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, it's not bad. He's, he's the opposite of Nick Chubb. He's a, a shifty receiving back that uh, – has got the Shady McCoy moves. Yeah. Wait, is it my turn again? Yes. It is. Has anyone picked Jonathan Taylor yet? Not yet. I'm going to pick Jonathan Oh, he Taylor. fell off a cliff. <laughs> I know, but I'm still going to pick him. I think it's another one of those same situations as CMC on the Panthers. Like, at what point are you like, I'm not really playing for this team <laughs> yeah. that hard anymore? <laughs> True. Definitely. All right, I'm going to go Derrick Henry. Oh, he got picked. Gage is first Wait. overall. Oh, oh no. Oh. Okay. Oof. All right. You know what? I'm going to go with a Raven, and I'm going to go J.K. Dobbins. I think he's finally going to have an injury-free season and fall out. <laughs> I thought he was a receiver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, that shows how much he's been yeah. injured. <laughs> Um, for my pick, I'm going to go uh, Alvin Kamara for one. Dang it. He's still in the league? <laughs> still in the league. Still in the league. Doing good, too. Um, I feel like he, like said, receiving back all the way through and through. Also came out of the state of Alabama, not necessarily Alabama University. But shout out. And then second one, I don't know. I you wonder in Green Bay, like, how good is Aaron Jones? You know, like, is I know. So, I think I like that will be my AJ young Aaron stuff. Jones, AJ yeah. Dillon, also yeah. good, the quad father. Yeah. That's the coolest nickname in the league. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna take Aaron Jones as my last, or second to last pick. Okay. Did someone pick Travis Etienne yet? Not sure. No. Yet. All right, let's go there. Here's who I was debating with. It was either him or ETN for me. <laughs> the Clemson man. Okay, Nick, you're up. Uh, let me see. I'll go Najee Harris. Roll top. Big boy. Jeez, a lot. That's a lot of Alabama there. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Hmm. I got to go with Philly. I got to go with Miles Sanders. I don't blame you. He, he did such a good job in helping get uh, Jalen Hurts some space, and I think that helps him out a lot. And then I think America's team, uh, Dallas, uh, Tony Pollard is, is definitely going to jump up. I think he's going to be uh, – a bell cow, he'll probably get 20 carries a day, uh, a game and kind of take it from there. Yeah, I like Tony Pollard a lot. Yeah, he's good, but I really don't want to say he's good. I hate, hate the Cowboys, <laughs> Tony Pollard. Exactly, yeah. I hate the Cowboys. <laughs> but, yeah, Tony Pollard, I think he's he's easily got the uh, depth, depth chart spot over Zeke. 
Cowboys are so wild, man. I know we're in a draft, so we don't get too off topic, but Cowboys are so <laughs> such an interesting team. Like nobody really likes them, but like, and their team's always really good. Like you can't argue, yeah. team, they've got stars on that team. Yeah. So you never yeah, know, really Zeke's know where their season's going. I think That's Zeke's what? got at least three more years where he could be a starter. Maybe so, yeah. but even that receiving core of like CD Lamb, ooh, CD Lamb's a monster. I know, yes. dude. And it's weird how they they really do attract players. Like players want to play for the Cowboys. It seems like, which I hate. <laughs> Jerry Jones, good salesman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Nick, your last pick. Um, I'll go. I'll go Swift on the Lions. All right. I like the Lions a lot. I hope they do good next year. All right, I'm gonna go with the Alvin Kamara. Kamara got picked. You keep trying oh to pick gauge of stuff here. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so small on my phone screen. I can't keep track. Oh, I know, dude. I literally zoom in on the screen. Uh, all right, let's go Isaiah Pacheco. Oh, that's a that's good, good one. That's good. I was definitely thinking about him. Yeah. All right, for the Mr. Relevant of our draft, I um, so there's no other picks. It's either between Raheem Mostert or Brees Hall for me. Like Brees Hall, such a good start of that season before he got hurt. Most or yeah. has – did he do good on the Dolphins? Uh, Yeah, he did pretty good. I think he's 22 st- – I mean, he didn't even have 1,000 yards. He had almost 900 yards, five uh, uh, yards per carry. Yeah. But yeah. – so, I mean, it's not great. So, I think for that reason alone, I will have to go with the injured man and Brees Hall. I mean, that was – that first half of the season was about to be insane. Yeah, that's wild, dude. The I'm Jets like- are another team where it's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, that's, that's terrifying for a Bills fan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, last year, what I'm looking at the stats: seven games, 463 yards on 80 attempts. That's mm. wild. And then 218 receptions or receiving yards. My bad. Yeah. Well, as a rookie, as a rookie, yep. the sky's the limit as long as he can get that knee healthy. Yeah. With maybe Aaron <laughs> Rodgers back there, who knows? Adam's like thinking some Tanya Harding stuff. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who can I? Play? All right, let's see what they're competing in. 76. Wait, that ain't it. It's this one. All right, so who would make a better fashion model, computer programmer, or truck driver? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, let's pick one of these. Which one's a better fashion model, computer programmer, or truck driver? Caden, uh, you've been kind of quiet today. We'll let you have the pick. Oh man. Let's go with fashion model. Fashion model. All right. So let's take that. Which group is the better fashion model? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gage, you get the first vote in this one. First vote. Time though, because there's yeah, there's a big group of, of different guys here. My my gut here is Nick's group because Christian McCaffrey's been on so many of those like GQ covers and all sorts of weird things. And then Joe Mixon always has uh fun with uh Burrow Children? around oh, his interviews. Yeah. <laughs> but um... thanks, man. <laughs> Um, I'm definitely, I think I'm definitely leaning towards Nick's route too, man. And like, like you said, it's not because anybody else besides Christian McCaffrey. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't want to see Derrick Henry in a nice runway. Situation. I mean, you could. He does put in a suit. Yeah. Josh Jacobs always, you know, is styling and profiling out here in Vegas. <laughs> so he looks really good as far as that goes. No homo. I'm going to start. Nothing wrong if you're homo before I continue this, but <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, good looking guy. All right. We can all admit yes, that. Yes. He and, is. Yeah. Uh, for that reason, line. next group gets the vote. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm also same. going to go next group. Are we looking at the clean we, sweep? Yeah, this might yeah. be a clean sweep. I don't know if anybody's coming close like as a fashion model here. Saquon does a lot of modeling. Mm. Yeah, as Saquon's far as like, GQ personality. Stuff. Are you voting for yourself, Nick? Yeah. Yeah, the clean I, I was sweep. Say the same thing. Clean sweep. 
that's amaze balls there. So we'll give us <laughs> the, uh, the Seahawks disgusting green there. <clears throat> Action green, baby. Ugh. How many jerseys <laughs> of that color do you have? Uh, just one, actually. And I, okay. I need a new one. I need a new one. But I've got a... You got to get a Gino one, right? I do. I've got the Russell Wilson one still. I don't really wear it. But, <laughs> but need to get some more. I'm slacking on my jersey game recently. Yeah. So I do have um, – we're about out of time here, but I, I really appreciate you three coming on the show tonight. Um, Thursday Night Thoughts. One other thing I did want to talk about a little bit um, was just some of the stuff going on recently. Like the biggest thing that I've seen is all the issues with Aaron Rodgers and Lamar Jackson, things like that. So um, – just kind of going around, we'll start with you, Gage. What do you think about Aaron Rodgers and, and Lamar Jackson? Do you think if you were a GM, are you going after which one? Um, I don't know. I mean, Lamar is obviously more open right now. It seems like Aaron was a no-trade clause, which Lamar doesn't have, but Aaron has a no-trade clause, so he has to agree to a team – which he's already agreed to the Jets. It's not like like if you were example the you know Dolphins. Like you're not going to swoop in and come steal Aaron Rodgers because then Aaron has to also agree to play on your team. Mm -hmm. So, and also but, you're looking at like one let's or two. Say it's a blank slate, and if you were a GM and to say, hey, uh, Vegas or um, Alabama's getting an NFL team, okay. and you get to pick between Aaron Rodgers and Lamar at this point in their career. Who, who do you think you would take? All right. Well, uh, without age being an obvious factor, we'll just pretend it's not. Um, I'd still, I'd still probably have to go with Lamar, man. I just feel like you can build around him. Um, as far as the scenarios they're in right now, I still have no clue how Lamar is not on a different NFL team at this point. I mean, obviously, I don't get paid GM money, but for two first round picks, Lamar's yours, and. You're not drafting many people in the first round better than Lamar Jackson, a former unanimous MVP. So that's that's wild on that. So I'm taking yeah, definitely taking Lamar. We haven't seen him with any receivers though. That's the that's the scary part in my I eyes. I know. That's the gamble. But if All he's right. done that good without receivers, imagine what ah, that's what I'm with. saying. Yeah. <laughs> well then also Deshaun Watson kind of fucked it up too, I think. Like yeah. the massive contract just not going well. It's true. I mean, you know, Lamar's agent is playing that up. Like, if Deshaun's getting 250, you don't think I deserve <laughs> yeah. 250? So, yeah, very sad. All right, Kate. Place. Same question to you. If you were a, a new GM and Utah was to get an NFL team and you could pick between Aaron Rodgers right now and Lamar Jackson right now to build your team around, who are you picking? Oh, uh, man. This is, this is a hard one because I'm a Ravens fan. So, I don't know. I've actually been wanting to trade away Lamar for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets it. I don't know. I just feel like you're limited. He's amazing. Wait. It's, but oh, yeah. Explain that. Just like, I don't know. Like, if we get, like, if if we're losing a game, there's no way we can come back with the style of play. Like, it's, it's pretty uh, much impossible. So, unless you just get this lead right off the bat, like, you can't come back. It's super just slow. So, if, like, I don't know. You're not blocking good one day, or Lamar's not running good. You, like the whole thing falls apart on one guy's shoulders. It's just not very much of a team, I yeah. feel like. And so I don't know. Like you can't get your running backs and and receivers involved enough to make a difference and do anything else. And do you think that's so Lamar's like, fault, or? No, I don't think it's his fault. I just think it's how he plays, and I also think Greg Roman kind of built it out that way but it was kind of like a high floor, low ceiling situation where they yeah. were going to make the playoffs every year, but it, they're never going to win the Super Bowl. Right. I don't know if you're uh, like, you see Lamar playing and like, he's consistently over the past three years made Mark Andrews look like, you know, one of the top two best tight ends in the league. Yeah. And is Mark Andrews really a top two tight end? You <laughs> he wasn't before. Well, <laughs> and that's why Lamar's accuracy numbers are so good. It's like, he throws to a tight end twice as much as a receiver mm -hmm. or dump off to running back. Mm. That's fair. So I mean, Aiden, yeah, I got you. are you taking the one time MVP, uh, Lamar, the two time back to back MVP, Rogers? One of them has a Super Bowl ring. Yeah, you can't beat Rogers' accuracy. Even with his old age? 
Yeah, still. I don't know. Look at Tom. Tom's what, 45? 46. 46. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, Nick. Who you uh, got? I'm going Lamar, but that's, that's you know, it's tough to say. Aaron Rodgers, I kind of idolize a little bit as far as his stats go, but um, as as I think everyone should. Um but especially like the style of quarterback that I am is not an Aaron Rodgers at all. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I yeah. think that, I mean, just if it wasn't for the age, I go Aaron Rodgers for sure. But the age is, I mean, how are you going to build a team around that, you know? It's true. I think it's the old classic, you know, Aaron Rodgers, much higher floor, lower ceiling. Lamar, the sky's the limit, but he's a yeah. lower floor. So Yeah, exactly. And if you get some good receivers behind Lamar or like for Lamar, I mean, who knows, you know? Maybe. <laughs> Caden's like, ah. <laughs> yeah, Caden Caden has a very close relationship with this That's question. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm stuck with Lamar. I, I, I'm just long. <laughs> Yeah. It, it's so funny because it's so true. Like, if you talk about 49ers players, I'm sure that I have wildly different opinions than the rest of the world. <laughs> huh. No, it's funny because in our group, there's another Caden, Caden Gomez. Um, he was actually one of the original people that gave me this idea to start a podcast about football in Utah and all of us playing flag together and all this stuff. And he's a Ravens fan, too. And we have you here, Bradbury. Um who's also a Ravens fan and named Caden. So it's, it's pretty funny that that happened, but I like, I, I see where you're coming from with Lamar being so uh, versatile, but Aaron Rodgers had two back-to-back seasons where he was the league MVP. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I don't see that going away. If he gets that roster in, in New York, I don't see the bills winning the division. And it's, it's definitely terrifying to me. And I'm like, if I were to start a team, Mentally, Aaron Rodgers is one of the guys I would take. It would be in order. I would take Mahomes, Josh Allen, and then Aaron Rodgers. To Even at his current number. age, though? Yeah, because I, I would say he's got three more years of MVP caliber play um, if he's got a good line around him. And if Lamar's he, been injured the last third of the season, the last two seasons in a row, too. Yeah. But that's also probably just like a, ah, fuck this. <laughs> also not going to run past the Joe Burrow slander. No, Mahomes, Allen, Burrow. <laughs> just wanted to say. That's an interesting one, too, because, yeah, I think, um, I think sadly, Josh Allen is turning into um, Phillip Rivers because they both have 17, and <laughs> they can do really well in the regular season, but they can't do shit in the postseason. And He's balled out against the Patriots that one game. Yeah. Well, he also beats – um, Mahomes in the regular season almost every time. I think these four and six mm. against Mahomes in the regular. I think season. Mahomes just is just magic in the playoffs too, though, which I hate because I root against <laughs> them every single game. Yeah, but awesome! Thanks for coming on tonight, guys. It was a fun chat here. And then, uh, is there anything else you wanted to leave us with, Gage? Uh, just a good roll tide. I mean, keep it rolling, you know, <laughs> I'm excited to play in, uh, excited to play in our, uh, tournament next weekend. Um, I'm excited to see all y'all fellas again, catch up a little bit and hopefully we come out at least play some pretty good. So Definitely. I appreciate you for having me on. Hopefully I'll get to come back again sometime and get to carry this tradition on. <laughs> all right. See you later guys. See you, see you Adam. Thanks. Thanks for having us.